Welcome everyone to the fifth Zcash Foundation Audiovisual Club monthly meetup. I'm really excited about this. We have a chance to kind of start the hype cycle for, for Zcon 4, which is one of my favorite events every year. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So it's a, kind of an honor to be a part of the, of the hype in the community and, and getting people excited and started to, to prep because there's a lot of different stuff that we can do, a lot of stuff we can work on. We have a lot of ideas and I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what everyone else comes up with as we include more of the community in Zcon. It's always been a very small sort of um, central community effort and and really like um we've always tried to expand this out to the online community that can't attend because it's always in a different part of the world each year and it's not cheap to travel there from everywhere and then there's visa limitations and plus the cost of the registration um, this year we have this awesome scholarship program going on we have the ambassador program zf is really putting an effort out to get everyone to zcon who wants to be there and I really appreciate it. And I, I think that uh, we have some folks in ZFAV Club who also really appreciate the opportunity to be involved, whether you're, whether you're on location or online. So that's what we'll be talking about today. And this, uh, this is going to be, this video will be published soon uh, within the next week. So if you're watching on YouTube, hopefully you have enough time. You still have two months before ZCon 4. And you can get involved with the ZFAV Club. You can get involved with ZF. And, uh, and, and you can be a part of Zcon for as much as you want to be. That might be just watching along online. Or you could be chatting along and being participating in the Q&A, which is happening on a platform I believe is called Whova. Is that right, Dan? Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we'll talk about all of that stuff. Um, the, let's see, my priority for the, for the club in the next two months is Zcon 4. I'm going to take priority away from, uh, some other kind of side projects that we've been brainstorming and, and ideas that I've had, because I think that the, that Zcon deserves the, the attention of the entire community and we can make a big splash out of this and, and especially with the ZFAV club um, gathering places that we have in this, com this community chat and conversations that we have going already. And things like what Rob is, is uh, sharing in his screen here, which is really awesome with the layout happening with the Zcon 4 layout, the, the feedback loop of the, of the graphics. I like all of this mm -hmm. fascinating stuff. And uh, <clears throat> the translation, the transcription and translation that's happening there is coming from Speech Logger, which is a bit of software that Rob found and suggested to us. We're doing this in an alternative to Google. He's gone now. Uh, we've been using Google Translate in the past to do this, and that works. We're trying out Speech Logger. I think that graphically it looks a little bit better. It's a little easier to read. The main thing is that it doesn't change the text all the time like Google Translate does, which makes it more difficult to read and follow along. So this is kind of some of the stuff that we're going to be playing with leading into Zcon, because I really want to get uh, as many live translations going as possible. YouTube doesn't provide translations of live content. They only provide translations <laughs> and, and live subtit or subtitles on non-live published videos. So. We'll have those transcripts and translations once it's all published after the fact, but these are full day live streams or half day live streams. So there's going to be four hours between the first broadcast and the, the first um, YouTube supplied transcriptions, translations. So this, this translation process that we've been working on in the club and that Rob was just showing off is going to be the real uh, like live interaction hands-on um, connection that people in the online world have to, to Zcon in their native languages. So that's super important. That's going to be the my like top priority for remote involvement in Zcon 4. And beyond that, we have a lot of ideas that we'll talk about um, that, that people can do for, for commentating, for um, making Z pages, live tweeting, we can uh, talk about interviews at the event and all of this. So 
that's kind of a rundown of the plan for the meetup and where our priorities are. Um, I'm also working on the calendar on the ZFAV wiki. I wanted to mention that real quick. This is hosted on the Zach Hub site, on the Zach Hub wiki site. And they've created a calendar there for us, which I'm going to be filling out. I've started a little bit, and I hope to have this published and updated by the end of the week or early next week. And that will include workshops, uh, our weekly workshops, our weekly meetings with some kind of topic structure, as well as uh, plans and schedule for ZCon for kind of broad at first, and then we'll narrow that down to specific gatherings and events as we approach the actual dates. Uh, and then also uh, on that, I hope that this calendar kind of forms into more of a, a public mm, communications AV release calendar. So if there's any other kind of AV community calls, meetups, any other thing in the Zcash world that's happening where we want people to know about it. Things like this PGP live stream that I just found out about 30 minutes before or an hour before this meetup. Uh, having something on that or something like that on a calendar ahead of time would be really helpful. And I think the ZFAV calendar is a good spot for that. So that's where my focus is, uh, is on this week and this weekend. I'm also working on the Zcon highlights still. This is kind of taking a back seat to club administration and and setup and um, my personal vacation as we as we get to the fourth and fifth months of, of the ZFAV club. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on that, that you all don't see. And if you come to the, the weekly meetings, um, you'll hear me talk about it a bit and, and sort of the extra efforts besides the creative stuff, besides the publishing stuff and editing that, that's going into all of this. It's a lot more than I expected in that in that side, but it's a lot of fun. To, to bring the community together and, and try to uh, yeah try to get some motivation and inspiration from you all and hopefully share some of that around. So that's where the Zcon highlights is is kind of right now. It's slowed but not uh, not discontinued. The um, other really cool thing that's wor being worked on in the ZFAV club is what we're what I'm calling the John Opticon and this is what you can see. John is streaming into Discord here with all of these different camera angles. <laughs> And there's a reason for this. Uh, he's he's hasn't just lost his mind and decided to get, capture himself at every angle, <laughs> but so so uh, we'll talk about the the purpose of this of these experiments and of this setup um, later on in the meetup towards towards the end where we can talk about brainstorming for ideas for interaction at ZCon four for the on location cruise. And this is pretty cool stuff. It is secondary to the translations for me because I, I think that uh, the translations will allow us to reach for much broader communities, and that's the, really the goal of, of the club. So uh, John's is more of like giving the, the on-location folks something really fun to play with and something to do that is going to add to that experience, and it, and it has a lot of potential to add a lot to that experience. So yeah, we'll get into that, and I'll have John explain this. As we as we talk more about Zcon four, um, another thing that another thing that's on my uh, priority list is this Alpha Day dashboard. Alpha Day received a grant from the Zcash Community Grants Committee a while back, and they have a dashboard up. Which um, if you if someone has a link to that, can you share it in the chat? Uh, I don't have access to the chat, but the um, They've been really cool. The Alpha Day team has been great. They've been working with us to to fine tune the dashboard to suit our community needs. Zcash community is this sort of uh, well decentralized sort of globulous thing that people on the outside might have a hard time understand how it how you work with it because we have all of these different entities and all these different individuals and and uh, the Zcash forum itself can be a kind of turbulent pool. So. Alpha Day is being really great working with us to make sure that it comes out as representing this this community and as a, like such the diverse group that it is. And uh, it's been great. They've done some great work on there. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. And uh, we'll be meeting with them next week and giving another review of, of what they have. Something specific that I wanted to mention there was podcasts. They do have a section for podcasts, which now is 
filtered sort of by an automatic Zcash filter that captures any kind of podcasts on their list, which has Zcash in the topic and the description. So that's fine. It works pretty well. But we can actually give them a list of Zcash, or of Zcash specific podcasts to watch for and add to that list. YouTube channels don't count. This was kind of their main point that most of the Zcash podcasts are done in a video style. They're put on, on YouTube, they're put on Odyssey. What they actually want for that dashboard is the popular podcast platforms. So Google, Apple, Amazon. If you are a podcaster and you're publishing Zcash podcasts, then I would ask that you put it on those major platforms and then we can get that list filtered or another widget added to that dashboard that has a specific list of the, let's say, official Zcash podcasts, you know, the ones that, that are recommended through the forum. That's kind of how we're controlling all of this. So if you see the dashboard and there's something you want to add to it, something you want to change, go to the forum, find the Alpha Day thread, and, and make comments on there, please. Uh, we appreciate all of your support, and we want this to be a successful grant for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else do I've got here for intro? Um, there's a control panel that I'm working on that I kind of keep updated. I'm calling it the control panel. It's sort of my overview vision of the ZFAV club activities. Um, there's a link to that, which uh, Dan, I don't know, I can't see the chat. So if you're posting these, then then just kind of give me a nod. But if you could share the uh, the link to the to the ZFAV control panel in the chat, people can keep up with what we're doing there. And I try to keep that up to date. Don't yell at me if it gets outdated. I'll, I'll get to it eventually. Um, that's, that's sort of background on ongoing projects. Recent events, I want to cover some stuff real quick um, because I think it's really important that we highlight what's going on in the community in these monthly calls. And just within the last month, there's been a lot. Just today, Nighthawk Apps released their first ever early quarterly report. This is, a, this is a really big deal. Nighthawk Apps is a, a long-standing member of the community participating in, in a really heavy way. And uh, Addy yeah. has been really put up with, he's been putting up with a lot uh, as far as how, how the community um, interacts, I believe. And I'm, a, I'm fully appreciative. If I see it happen, I think we all do if we're watching the forum. And Nighthawk Apps has been through the ringer and they've been through... Uh, through the entire Zcash funding program. So I think that's pretty cool and they deserve, they deserve our support. And uh, they here they've just released their first quarterly report, which is also uh, setting a good example for, for grant re recipients. We, this is good for yeah. accountability and it will help with some of the, the, the complaints and some of the, the fervor that happens in the, in the forums. Releasing this kind of transparency report is always helpful. I think when it comes to that. Um, also worth pointing out is Dan went to consensus last month. How was that, Dan? It was cool. Yeah, it was it was a well put on event. Um, yeah, a lot of good talks. I got a, some footage. I'm still trying to put together a tiny little. It'll be a short video. Um, but yeah, you know, a ton of projects there. Um, I took some notes on like things that I think were worth recreating at Zcon 4, things they did well, things we would want to avoid. Um, but overall, yeah, cool experience. Happy to have gone. Yeah, some networking and whatnot. And, um, and I enjoyed it, yeah. Nice. That was like, that's my main question really is about like, what can we learn from that uh, cons uh, uh, event like Consensus? I mean, they've been around for eight years, 10 years, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. that's, that's pretty impressive in, in the cryptocurrency space. And since you're so core to the to the development of, of Zcon and the planning of Zcon, there's, I'm sure there's yeah. some cool stuff that you got from that. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll be incorporating some things and, you know, using stuff to improve on Zcon from last year. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about this year's Zcon. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It will be. Uh, awesome. So that, yeah, that happened. Um, Zcash Brazil also went to the Web Summit in Rio, which was uh, really, really a big event for them. They they all seem to enjoy it. If you haven't seen any of this stuff, then go to the Zcash Brazil Twitter account. Check that out. There's a lot of um, pictures of them with the Brave team and the NIM team. 
and uh, there's hopefully some some partnerships going on with those teams in the future between at least the AV club, uh, if not with with the whole Zcash community or the greater larger Zcash community there. So that's really cool. Check that out if you haven't seen it. Another really big development uh, in the last month is the first episode of Zcast, the the Zcash podcast in Espanol. That was released, I believe, just like a week, two weeks ago. And if you haven't, um, if you missed it, we had the last meetup. I still haven't released this video. I'm working on it. Uh, but the last meetup really highlighted the work that Roosevelt and Aura are doing on Zcast. Between then and now, they've released their first episode. You can check that out. Um, find do if you type Zcast Zcash into like a Twitter search or or YouTube, then you'll be able to find their their channels, their podcast. So check that out, and we'll be working with them um, on getting that translated as well, doing subtitles at the very least. And uh, part of that process is what slowed me down on releasing the last meetup video because we have the two languages going on in the actual video. I want to make sure that we have subtitles, at least for those two languages, proper and complete. And uh, yeah, we'll be publishing that in, in English and Spanish and hopefully some other some other subs. And then I'll share that process with everyone so that the AV Club can then help facilitate this, this translation process. Because it's nice that we have automated tools, but they all still do need a little bit of the human touch to make sure that it, it understands the words like Zcash and Z and Zcon and uh, and some of the, the encryption stuff that we're using, especially. So that process is going to be really helpful. And for now, it's kind of slow, but we'll get we'll get it sped up. All right. So some upcoming events that we have going on. Uh, we'll get to Zcon Zcon Four. It's the big one, right? This is the whole point of this meetup, and we'll get there. Uh, after a few other things, I want to point out. Um, we're gonna. I mentioned that I want to switch the main platform for these meetups. I hopefully will do that for the next one, which is a month away. We can switch that to free to Z, so the main gathering would be on free to Z, and then we'd be broadcasting into Discord, and uh, and wherever else. That would just be for the monthly meetups, because I, I think that Discord will still work well for the weekly meetings and the the weekly workshops. Um, which I'm actually going to switch. This is another one of the announcements I'm going to make. Uh, I don't think it's affecting anyone's life, but I'm going to have the weekly meetings for ZFAV Club happen on Tuesdays, and then the weekly workshops will be on Wednesdays. This way we can talk about what we're going to do in the workshops at the meetings. It made a little bit more sense that way. I kept wanting to talk about like news and community events at the workshops because it was earlier in the week. But uh, yeah, I figure... This makes more sense. We'll switch that, start doing that next week. So next week, the weekly meeting will be on Wednesday. The weekly workshop will be on Wednesday. Did I say that right? No. The, the meetings will be on Tuesday. The, week shop, the workshops will be on Wednesday. And hopefully I never have to say that again because it's a real tongue twister. <laughs> then what, uh, other, uh, other weekly meetings and monthly meetings that we're planning, actually, uh, to keep an eye out for is um, a one really big one that we're talking about and I'm excited about is a grants call. And we want to have once a month, uh, I'm thinking a 90 minute call highlighting what's going on in the community grants program. So this would be featuring a, a grant recipient and that would be the larger part of the 90 minutes. They would talk about what they've been up to, what they've worked on since. This would be someone that didn't just receive a grant, but the uh, project that's been working on a grant for a while that has big updates to announce and then really have a feature, feature highlight there. And then we'll also spotlight a grant applicant that is uh, looking for extra community feedback on their grant. And that will, this will give us the same space uh, in this grants call to, to maybe ask some questions, but to give them a chance to really talk to the community and, and face the community to get um, to get the feedback that they need in order to hopefully have a successful grants application and a successful grant follow through as well. Uh, and then also in that call, I think that it, the reason that it could be 90, 90 minutes is because we could do a lightning talk style updates from ongoing grants at the end of the call. And so this would be stuff like Taylor Hornsby's uh, security updates, 
um, what Ian is working on with his decentralized exchange research, um, stuff like Ying Tong's ongoing support for Halo 2. Any of these positions, basically, they, the, the individuals, the projects have a chance to be able to do quick updates on what they've been up to. So there's a lot of stuff there because the grants, the community grants program is so active. I mean, we're not even talking about the ambassadors here. That could be a whole different call. But uh, I really want to start, and uh, this has been echoed. Dan also brought it up uh, uh, several times that we want to start this call as soon as possible so that we can start giving a voice and a platform to, to the grants, to the grants applicants, to the grant recipients, and everyone. Yeah. And to help, uh, the one other aspect of that would be to just help um, grantees figure out, you know, what keep everybody updated. Is there duplicate work going on? What tools are people using? And kind of have, have an opportunity to have more col collaboration between grantees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really important point as well. Um, I mean, like, I think we just saw an example of someone asking for a grant and didn't know that there was another. It was with the Halo 2 documentations grants, I believe, that they, the connection mm -hmm. between Ying Tong was pretty direct and they, they needed that connection to happen. And it was a forum post away. So hopefully mm -hmm. by having these community calls, we can even make that more, that connection more fluid. I think it's really, it's, it's going to be a good thing. So look for that announcement. Uh, we have some ideas of how we're going to roll this out, but uh, nothing specific yet. So the other one, the other community call we're talking about doing is a communications, a general Zcash comms call. Uh, this is like totally in the, in the wild cloud works now, but uh, we'll, we'll get it going and I'm excited about that too. And this is, goes along the lines of having a, like a calendar where we have a publishing concept for what's going to be published by all the different platforms, by all the different community members. What are we working on? What are we talking about? What are we publishing? You know, try to get some, um, some synchronization, I think is a really important thing and having a regular comms call, whether it's weekly or monthly. I would prefer weekly, but I, I know people already have a lot of calls going on. So we'll work out those details and we'll keep everyone updated there as well. This is kind of part of an effort that the ZFAV club is trying to sort of spearhead to get more community calls, more meetups, more online events happening um, where we can share this information and collaborate more fluidly instead of just using the forum. Uh, Dismet just posted about the Grants Committee election. That call will be on the ZF YouTube as the previous ones have been, but we could probably loop it out to free to Z as well. Yeah, that's actually, that's a, a, something that I'm going to start doing and I encourage anyone else to do it really. If you're watching on YouTube, you're watching any of these community calls and you use free to Z, then, uh, going from the community call into OBS into free to Z is a fairly simple thing to do. We can help you with that if yeah. you've never done it before. And I fully encourage everyone to do it for, for any of the community calls, especially if you're doing something like the language translation that Rob is doing here for your, for your own community. I think this is like yeah. times 10 plus level up, whatever achievement unlocked type of stuff. It's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Dismet just posted in the chat again about a how-to video. That's something uh, Ryan and I and John can chat about. Yeah, yeah, that excellent done. point. Yeah, yeah that would that'll be a really good thing to have. And also, like, it, that plays into our plans for ZCon 4. So these are the types of tools that uh, it'd be nice to have tutorial videos for, but these are the types of tools that will really allow the online audience to participate more and to, to like, bring Zcon to the to the bigger communities. Uh, on that topic actually is uh, Dodgers AMA. Dan, can you tell us a little about that? It's happening in a couple hours. Yeah, um, oh, I should get the exact time, but yeah, it's happening in a couple hours. Um, there was a bunch of questions posted to the forum and um, Dodger will be answering those questions based on how many likes they got. Um, that'll be on zoom i will tweet out and post the public link right after this call and then it will also make its way to the zf youtube uh once it's over perfect yeah and i i believe that i'm going to be pushing that over to free to z 
uh, on the ZFAV channel, unless someone tells me not to. But so far, no one's told me that yet. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, stay tuned for that. I'm excited about this. It's been a while since Dodger's done anything like this. So it should be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Uh, other upcoming events. There's the ECC restructuring discussion that's going to be happening on Twitter Spaces tomorrow. That's a really big deal. Um, it's for me personally, it's kind of heartbreaking because I know a lot of people who are affected by it uh, up to and including Zuko as a CEO. It's got to be hard to let that many people go. So I don't want to talk about it too much because I'll start to cry. So let's just leave it at that. Check out the, the Twitter space tomorrow and uh, and follow up on what ECC is doing. I, I, I do believe they made the right decision. It's got to be hard for them. Uh, and that difficulty in making that decision speaks to the necessity of it, I, I believe. So uh, yeah, best of luck to everyone at, at ECC and, and the ones who had to leave. Um, on a happier note, Internet Archive D-Web Camp is next month. It's in June. I've been working with Internet Archive uh, and D-Web to be able to uh, lead a workshop at the camp on behalf of ZFAV Club. I'm really excited about this. It's going to be cool. Uh, it's in the Redwoods in Northern California. Hopefully, we can get some other ZFAV folks to join. And uh, I'm going to be basically taking my live stream equipment, my cameras, my microphones, teaching people there how to use all of it, and then we'll be then using it um, to, to record and maybe live stream, depending on internet connection in the Redwoods, uh, maybe, maybe live streaming, maybe just recording, but we'll be capturing all the presentations that are happening there. And uh, I'm looking forward to meeting some new people who will also be able to join us and to help with future ZFAV events and productions and all of this. So exciting expansion opportunities and, and partnerships in the future with Internet Archive, which is another organization that I respect uh, a lot, a ton. So this is going to be cool. And now on to the fun part. ZCon 4 in Barcelona at the end of July in 2023. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. It's going to be fun. It's going to be super nerdy. And I can't wait. I'm really excited. I've been to... I've been to every ZCon, uh, except for ZCon Voices. I uh, missed that regrettably. But this will be my fifth ZCon. And uh, my first time in front of the camera, my first time uh, on, on stage doing any of that, I've always been doing the live streams for, for ZCon. So it's going to be a new experience for me. But I, uh, I do have a lot of experience uh, with the events that I think kind of gives me a little bit of authority to be able to talk about what to expect from ZCon if some people have have questions you can ask them in the chat and uh first i guess like i want to really focus on what zfav will be doing at zcon um for like well actually first we're going to go over what to expect from from zcash from the zcash foundation stuff like the schedule yeah. the venue the food and all of that then we'll talk about mm -hmm. what zfav will be doing at the event and for the next two months getting ready for it i've already talked about that a little bit um, if you have any questions about ZCon specifically, go to the Zcash forum, find the ZCon 4 announcement thread, and add your questions there. Let's get that conversation going to ask questions specifically about ZCon 4 uh, on location stuff mostly, or if you have any questions or suggestions on how we can include the uh, remote audience more, you can ask them all there as well. The ZFAV ideas, questions, troubleshooting, all of that fun stuff that are specific to what we'll be doing in connection to ZCon 4, go ahead and to go to any of our Discord channels on the ZFAV Discord server and just start asking, start playing with us, start uh, coming to the, to the workshops, to the meetings. We'll be talking about all of the ZCon 4 stuff. It takes priority and it's going to be fun and exciting. So... Get involved with us on Discord for ZFAV. Go to the forums for, for Zcash Foundation questions. And let's, let's uh, yeah, get into, I guess the FAQ is a good yeah. place to start, Dan. Take it away. What do you, what do you have yeah, for us? Yeah, I, I, I can just rip off a few general things. But, yeah, the FAQ here, let me post just so everybody. This is the main page here. Post it in the chat. 
Um, I'll start by saying if anybody has feedback on this website, as far as things that would be useful to add, please um, DM me on the forum or Discord or Twitter, and um, I'll pass that along to the team. If there's anything that we can improve or that should be added, that would be helpful for any type of participant, whether it be virtual or in person. Um, so yeah, this year is a little bit different. We're partnering with a couple teams to have a whole ZK week in Barcelona, which is interesting, something we haven't really done before. So this year we're partnering with uh, the ZK proof team and the inverse tech team to host ZK week. So starting on July 29th, which is the day before ZCon4 starts, Daniel Benarok of the Inverse Tech team and the O1 Labs team are co-hosting the Crypto Lounge experience at Soho House Barcelona. I will post that link before I move on. That is their website. So this is happening. Let me click back over. That's happening uh, July 29th, the day before ZCon4. Then the following three days are ZCon4. That will be taking place at the Hilton Diagonal Mar in Barcelona. So that's July 30th through August 1st. And this year's ZCon theme is the future has not been written. Um, it comes with a little bit of sub subtext as far as you know the future has not been written but the past has so we want to highlight past work of the zcash ecosystem and the builders and the community but also facilitate conversation and talks that will help the community align on the future of zcash as well um we received a ton of amazing talk submissions there'll be two tracks the rooms are right next to each other they'll be set up in the same exact way and um, yeah, they're basically uh, two tracks, three days, uh, mostly all day. There'll be lunch break, uh, snack break at the end, and then uh, time for like two hours after that snack break. And then on day one, there'll be a cocktail reception on site there for every, everybody there. And on day two, there'll be a cocktail reception and a welcome dinner on location as well. And then on August 2nd, which is the day after ZCOM4, we partnered with the ZK Proof team and they will be hosting the ZK Proof 5.5 workshop. And that will be at the same venue, the Hilton Diagonal Mar um, in their conference space where ZCOM would have been the three days prior. So that's the rundown, general, some general information. Please check out the website. As Ryan said, also feel free to post on the forum or hit any of us up in DMs or in the AV Club Discord. Couple other notes. Um, we'll be live streaming it out to the ZF YouTube channel. We'll, we'll do the free to Z thing. Um, we have virtual registration through the HOVA app. Uh, I think we're going to do another meetup to kind of show everybody how that works, but I can share this link quickly here if I can copy it. And this is for virtual registration. This will be, you know, feel free to use pseudonyms and everything. And this will be so you can interact, ask questions to speakers, that kind of stuff. So here's the virtual registration link. And then the in-person registration link is coming right behind it in the chat cool and then yeah that, that's about all i had i mean we're going to have a variety of topics ranging from regulatory very we're going to have a community focused morning one of the days highlighting grantees the av club the ambassadors the ambassador program afternoons on each of the days we'll have town halls a lot of wallet stuff, ZSAs, proof of stake. Yeah, just a wide variety of topics. And um, yeah, I think I think that's the general rundown. If anybody has any questions, I can answer questions on the call here or not to keep repeating myself, please feel free to reach out or post. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, very good rundown. Thank you, Dan. And like, like you said, like the FAQ, like you can find all this other information on there. There's information about Barcelona on there. There's information about like, where to stay if you want to stay before and after ZCon. Um, 
booking an, an Airbnb and Hostel World was another one that, that came to mind. So uh, definitely check out that site and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Um, it's going to be yeah. a lot of fun. It's going to be super cool. And uh, uh, yeah, so let's see. Ambassadors, you mentioned compute community and the fact that there's going to be community highlights. There seems to be a lot of focus on this Zcon around community. Mm -hmm. that I haven't necessarily seen that. I mean, for me, the focus in Zcash has always been community. And I remember even at, at Zcon Zero, there was this real grassroots community vibe happening. And, uh, and I, I, I see that grow every year. But this year, it seems like there is really much more of a, like, a, you're seeing the effects of that outreach that ZF is doing in trying to get um, more of a community involvement and get away from the focus on the, the main organizations and, and more towards, <laughs> like, towards the ambassadors. And I actually want to mention real quick that if you are a Zcash ambassador and you're going to be at Zcon 4, come find me. Uh, come find me as soon as you get there to check in. Like when, when you check in, I'll probably be lingering around somewhere or or doing this this pre-show that we're talking about. If you're mm -hmm. bored, which is unlikely, but I understand how this can happen at conferences, even when you're like kind of overwhelmed to the point of not knowing what to do, come find me. Um, at the very least, I'll, I'll give you someone to hang out with. You can hang out with me, but... Uh, there's a good chance that I'll give you something to do as well. I always really like doing things at conferences. This is why I live stream them. I, I don't tell many people this, but I'm super awkward socially and I don't like being at events and not having something to do. So I decided to solve that problem by putting a video camera between me and the event and me and the people. And that's why historically I've, I've been live streaming these events as I, it gives me something to do and a, and a talking point. So if you can relate to any of that at all, then come find me and I'll give you something to do that will make you feel like you're participating at the event, like you're really a part of it. And, uh, and that might just be drinking a beer with me. It might be doing an interview. Something I'd really like to do is get the ambassadors giving interviews to speakers who have already spoken or people who were wanting to speak and didn't have the opportunity um, and grantees as well, which probably goes under the wanting to speak and didn't get the opportunity. I think the ambassadors are the perfect people to be giving these interviews and the ZFAV club will have the equipment and the skills to be able to support that and make that video happen. So again, if you're an ambassador, come find us and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll be find a project for us to play along with. And it'll really help to bring this environment and this climate out to the out to the internet and out of the halls of the hotel and of the conference. Mm -hmm. So that's super important stuff. Um, Zeal Talk is the working title for the Zcon 4 pre-show that I, I'm really excited to do. I've been talking about this for a while, the idea of having a, a sort of couch talk show format at Zcon 4 before the event, the day before the event, probably near the registration desk so that as... Uh, people are checking in as the speakers are checking in as the people who we know from the forums as being active members of the community come into Zcon 4 we can grab them throw them on the couch and just stick a microphone in their face and start asking them all the hard questions like where's the best paella in town serious stuff <laughs> uh yeah, so that's Zeal Talk. That's going to be Saturday, the 29th of July. Uh, I'm excited by that. It's going to be um, a really, really impromptu, ad lib, fun event and um, nothing yeah. too serious, but uh, we'll yeah. cover the it's topics. A, it's a good um, counterpoint. So the Crypto Lounge experience is going to be very cryptography workshop focused. So that'll be going on simultaneously at the Soho House. And so, yeah, if you're not going to that this would be a cool opportunity we'll still be setting up the venue that day but yeah we'll have a little spot to do this zeal talk and and hang out so yeah please feel free to to join ryan and i and whoever else hanging out there and doing getting some content yeah totally and that's also a good point that if you don't want to be on the camera if you don't want to sit on the couch and talk with us that you can hang out and see how we're doing the production you can you can play yeah. along if you have your own cameras if you have your 
phones and you want to see how you can do your own version of the John Opticon, then that would be a really good place to do that because we're going to be just setting up and playing and testing. We're going to be testing bandwidth and, and more devices is always a good way to do that. We're going to be testing people's laptops and cameras and, and seeing what we have. So Zeal Talk is going to be cool. That's Saturday the 29th. If you plan on coming to ZCon, um, I would recommend that you arrive on the 28th. Uh, at the at the yeah at, like the latest even because so 29th is already full of stuff to do like it's gonna be it's not gonna be a day you want to miss even though it's not on the schedule officially I, I don't think there's any of talks happening but yeah you definitely mm -hmm. want to come for the 29th and likewise you're gonna want to stay for the day after because of the the uh, the zk proof workshops and and everything we're gonna be working on with that so. Yep. So yeah, that's that's a probably a pretty important tip. Like come the day, come two days before, and stay two days after at least. If you've never been to Barcelona before, it's a great city, and and you might want to check it out. Outside of the conference, I do not think you're going to have a lot of time to to see outside of the conference. In my experience, you, I yeah, it's a rare opportunity to go and like go for a hike during the conference even, and to get outside. Take that opportunity if you have it, but don't plan on doing any city tours on the days that the conference is happening. Um, also mm -hmm. an important thing to note. The talks will hopefully be streamed to free to Z. Uh, like Dan said, uh, this is, yeah, yeah. okay. This is a, an important That's thing. It. If we're gonna be talking about community, then using free to Z in every way we can is a good thing. And mm -hmm. uh, we if, either we do that through ZF, like if ZF makes a new free to Z profile, or if we do it through the ZFAB, We'll figure that out. I think probably getting it through an official ZFAV free to Z site would be cool. Um, sure. Through that, and uh, from there, then all of the any anyone who wants to participate in the way that Rob is here by live streaming with the translations, you can then use free to Z as the source or one of the sources for it. And I see that the video for me, which is coming through Rob's video, is actually coming from free to Z. I don't know about the audio for his translations, but Vito was doing translations for the last meetup and he was using the audio from free to Z and then plugging the translations back into Discord through OBS. So having these extra video assets, the duck, having the, having the video assets uh, and audio assets going through different platforms has its benefits. And it can be used in interesting ways. And then uh, anyone who is doing remote commentary uh, can also use the free to Z to do their own community calls on their own free to Z pages. I think that that would be really cool. And uh, we'll see about like I guess just tweeting out whenever anyone goes live. We just let everyone know. So live tweeting and Mastodon and maybe Blue Sky are going to be important parts of this uh, promotion push this, this social media explosion that we're going to have during zcon uh i think it's a good chance for zcash to really make make a big show of what our community has has to offer um more so than just to the people speaking on stage uh so that's free to z streaming during zcon this will be handled uh by zf and then ambassador interviews that's going to be i've mentioned that already that's going to be a really big project for ZFAV on location at ZCon. The translation stuff, I don't want I don't want people who are at ZCon to be doing the translation stuff. I would prefer that people who cannot go to ZCon handle that because uh, I'm going to need as many hands in participation and, and um, volunteers as we can get to, to create all of this content. Um, and I appreciate all of the extra help that we can get for people at ZCon for. So yeah, it's going to be a really big team effort for people there and for remote team. And I'm, I'm, that's like the thing I'm most excited about is to see how, how many people we can get in working on this thing. Like it's a, it's this sort of, um, thrown together ragtag media conglomerate of, uh, decentralized privacy folks. It's going to be dope. <laughs> I'm really, really, I'm really excited to see what we can do. Um, the ZK proof coverage. This is something that's going to be interesting because historically I've had a problem live streaming workshops in a productive way for conferences and things. 
And typically the problem is that you want people at the event to be as hands on. <laughs> Mario, okay. Uh, <laughs> typically you want everyone to be as hands on as possible on location during workshops. And if you have cameras there, then people already start to censor themselves. And so this is like problem number one with live streaming workshops is that people feel watched and so they censor themselves. And now we have the issue of wanting to include people online and you want them to be as open and openly spoken and, and participatory as possible. So I, I want to figure out how we can do this, preserving the privacy and the free speech and the openness uh, for, all, for all the workshops, but also um, like that's a hard balance, right? Like to so this is what we can discuss between now and NZCon four. In the next two months, I don't want it to be too much of the discussion of brainstorming because I think we can do a lot more at ZCon four during ZCon four when we have all of our equipment and all of our brains together. We can really try to figure out some solution to this, and that'll be kind of the main workshop project that we're doing. Um, while everything else we're planning is working perfectly during the whole, the whole event, we have, we have something to kind of break and mess with and see if we can improve upon. There's rumors of an after party. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. So, uh, yeah, we like to party in case you didn't notice and, uh, we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to make a show of it in an AV club kind of way. Um, the, other thing I really want to mention before the next, while we're talking about planning for the next two months, uh, I'm going to have a wires meeting at some point, probably multiple of what I call the wires meeting. And that is a discussion about who's bringing what to ZCon for as far as cameras, wires, and storage, computers, all this different stuff. So that microphones, lights, whatever. Um, people who are traveling long distances might not be able to take everything that they have or everything they want to take. There's extra costs to extra baggage on airlines. There's fragile equipment. Some of us are closer than others. So there's the opportunity, for example, for me to take some extra stuff that maybe someone in Venezuela won't be able to bring along. The wires meetings are for that sort of discussion to make sure that we're that we're being efficient and, uh, and, and still covering all of the resources that we need for the projects that we plan on working on. So look for those meetings. Uh, and whenever I talk about wires meetings, that's what I'm talking about. The uh, last thing that I want to talk about before we go on to remote projects and participation, which we've already covered mostly anyway, but we'll kind of wrap it up and summarize um, after we talk about the John Opticon. So John, are you still there? <laughs> Can you? Yeah. Can you yeah, explain? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. So the idea for the John Opticon is that uh, we'll be enabling everyone at ZCon for with, with cameras and microphones using like whatever they have. So John, explain what we're looking at here. Yeah, this is just um, using uh, wireless connection methods to stream into OBS and then I'm getting it from two different computers and putting it onto the one that's right in front of me the the apple computer is over here there's actually just one uh webcam on there and then there's the apple phone which is here and then there's uh i think it's this phone here and they're, this one's connected by erian webcam and the other one's connected via the apple to apple method um i tried to hook up the android phone to the windows um, system, but OBS doesn't like, it doesn't like to, uh, capture the screen basically. So I just used Erian, um, to pipe that phone, which is this one into the other computer, which is over here on my right. Um, which also has this other camera going to it as well. And that still has that thermal imager, uh, mounted to the front of it. Um, and uh, the other webcam right here is just a webcam. That's not uh, anything special. But it's running through a program called ASCICAM, which has a nice um, filter ability uh, so you can make it nice and blurry like this if you wanted to, you know, protect your identity, you know, to an effect. There's also a way to 
make it to where it's just ascii characters you know numbers and letters and stuff because this is basically just running on a uh, command line and it's put it's grabbing your camera and it's putting the picture like a virtual camera right into the command line so obs is just grabbing that window and and just using it as a you know a window grab uh yeah um working on this you know as a way of yeah giving people uh, you know uh the ability to you know use their cameras in streaming methods and stuff like that um wirelessly um and also to make use of like your older devices and things like that which this actually does because only one of these phones is actually the one that i use the other three or the other two are old and this other one is here is for work they're actually but i don't use any of them they're actually older phones but they can be, you know, re uh, utilized in this way. Um, there's, you know, there's like the convenience factor of that. There's also like privacy implications that come with using Wi Fi IP cameras and stuff like that, you know. So that's definitely something, you know, that I wanted to talk about and also leads into more privacy preserving measures like this uh, ASCII cam. And then also the thermal imager. This is actually just a toy, but it's actually really neat enough to where you could almost like have some kind of proof that somebody is there almost and, you know, not completely dox them, I guess, you know. Um, there was uh, somebody else mentioned about like using CG, basically just scrub you right in, like superimposed over your actual, you know, persona. Kind of like how people wear like the furry suits and all that stuff, but you know, without actually having to wear it. Um, you know, I, I'll talk more about this little camera thing. Um, you know, some other time. It's actually just a little uh, hobby toy thing, and uh, got it for a really good price. But that was one of the reasonings. You know, when I when I decided to get it was that, and you know, using the ASCII cam and the privacy uh implications with running these cameras on wi-fi and just wi-fi in general um because yeah it's uh it's pretty it's, it's pretty scary what uh what wi-fi can do nowadays like especially with like the new wi-fi 6 is like 63 gigahertz or something like that and it can like detect the heartbeat like on your your skin and stuff like that it's it's pretty wild yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll uh we're hoping to have a ZFAV Wi-Fi like dedicated Wi-Fi and so it, it's the hotel still offering it and I have no idea what's going on with their infrastructure but if we get this at least we'll have uh our own high-speed connection out to the world. So if we uh have ZFAV participants doing videos along the con conference floor or wherever they are, um, that we can be using this things like this ASCII cam. We can do interviews with the anonymous members of our community, with the members who wish to remain anonymous in our community and have them turned into matrix looking code. And uh, we do a voice filter in OBS and we can do these broadcasts um, even during the, the Zcon 4 presentations in some cases. Uh, it's really up to the people who are going to Zcon 4 who want to participate in, in AV club style work this is the sort of stuff we'll be playing with. The um, Irian Cam is really cool software. I really like the way that that works just for the ease of it and the simplicity. It's not open source at all, but that's a really cool thing that, that John's using on one of his. Like he mentioned, we can use old tech, old, so old, old hardware. So that's another mm -hmm. benefit. There's a lot of different really like cool benefits, pros and cons here. Yeah, um, I haven't tested like the extent to which you know you can load uh, Irian on the same network, but uh, this one and these two cameras here are both on Irian, but they're just going to different computers, but they're on the same Wi-Fi network. So it will allow for that. Um, you may have a little bit of issue, maybe like when you try to connect the computer, it might act, you know, go to this one over here instead or whatever, but basically you can have more than one instance. Um, I think that may also be the case with um, Droid Cam because it lets you set custom uh, ports for your computer. Um, but so far, I've only used it for one single uh, device, uh, which is this guy here. My fingers. Gotcha. 
So there's Irian Cam, there's Droid Cam, there's Direct from Apple to Apple, and then the Android to Windows seems to work in a real similar way. And yeah, yeah, um, it it seemed to have issues with OBS, like it wouldn't allow it to grab the screen, like maybe it's like a protected content type of thing. Okay. Um, but I haven't I haven't looked into it too much. But yeah, you can basically grab your screen or you can have an app like a camera app going and you can have it right there you know on your computer um but as far as like capturing it yeah i haven't quite figured that part out yet yeah okay and, so yeah this and, basically if you're coming to zcon for and any of this sounds like fun then then come find us and we can hook you up with whatever works on your system and it'll give us a chance to test these things in a uh, different context with different equipment as well the equipment that we don't have access to so then we can we can put all this in the wiki. We can document all of it and uh, get some other folks using it as well. Uh, it's really cool stuff. John's been working on this a lot. He's also worked on the the majority of the automatic translation stuff uh, at the beginning on that too. So I really appreciate your help with all this AV Club stuff, John. It's it's really great. It's incredibly helpful and useful. Thank you. Yeah, definitely, man. No problem. Just looking at Rob Mars' screen here, man. That's. He's, he's going to town with these overlays. <laughs> yeah, he's got that animated ZFAV on there now. He, he made that for us. I wanted to also give a shout out to Rob Mine with for that graphic, uh, which is our first animated sticker in the in the ZFAV Discord now. And uh, yeah, Rob Mine's doing some really cool stuff with OBS. I'm loving this. This is a perfect example of what we could have at ZCon for, for how people can participate when they can't be there. This is going to... Um, it's going to be a real big, useful addition to the Zcash community and the Zcash ecosystem, drawing us, pulling us all together in, in this uh, really cool and important event. And um, we're going to be talking about a lot of pretty hot topics that uh, if the more people we have understanding it right away, then the better we can have these conversations be, um, be more poignant and more to the point and more timely. Uh, things like the dev fund, which I haven't even caught up on that. I started reading the dev fund forum thread. I haven't caught up on a lot of it because there's so much else. After my after my little two week offline break, I came back and looked at it. And I'm like 130 something unread in that one thread. Uh, I'm excited about the dev fund conversation. We probably won't talk about it too much in ZFAV context, because it will be talked about plenty by the rest of the Zcash community at ZCon. And I'm looking forward to that in a popcorn kind of way. So it's going to be entertaining. It's going to be, uh, yeah, we'll see what it is. We'll see what it is. I guess that's, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, so that's mostly what we've talked about now up to this point is ZCon, what to expect at the event, what CFAV will be doing. We've got a little bit of time because we started so late. I think we actually started about an hour ago. Um, ZFAV remote projects, stuff that you can work on if you can't make it to ZCon 4. Uh, I want to close with this. We'll kind of go over it real quick. If anyone has any ideas on what we can do to bring ZCon 4 to to more people or in a new level of interaction for zcon 4 for people who can't be there then join into the zfav channels and talk to us there about your ideas or what we can do to help support the community that can't attend zcon 4 talk to us at zcon uh, the zfav zcon 4 discord channel talk to us on the zcash forums in the in the zcon thread there uh, and let us know what we can do if you have if you have random ideas, criticisms, whatever they are. Um, my focus, like I said, is getting translations going for all of these. We will be organizing something like a program for uh, for onboarding translators in this process. People who want to do what Rob is doing, come into the ZFAV Discord, talk to us, come to the workshops. We'll help you hands-on get set up to do exactly what he's doing here. Do it in your own way. Uh, I'd like to get this translation going for in every one of the global calls language channels in the Zcash global discord. I think there's about eight of them, I want to say, something like that. So let's fill those. Beyond that, like 
There's co options for commentary, live commentary. You can do a call on free to Z. You can broadcast like this in one, one window and then have a Discord going where you're doing commentary and talking to your community about what's being discussed at ZCon4. And then we can all share this content, share it on Twitter, share it on your social medias so that uh, all these communities can, can collaborate more and, and hear what we're, all, what we're all talking about, what we're all sharing and really make this conversation bigger and, and more diverse than, than we've ever had before. Yeah. So that's my main call for participation. If you have any other ideas, uh, let us know. Um, join the weekly meetings and workshops. And yeah, that's, I, I'm really open to everything. Like we've talked about a lot of big ideas for ZCon4 from the pre-show to the uh to the wireless cameras the interviews the anonymized videos and, and interviews there uh the the coverage of the workshop afterwards what you can do if you're online and you're watching and you want to participate in some other way i hope that everyone has a good idea now of what to expect from zcon4 and from zfav at zcon4 we're still gonna have a ton of surprises like i can guarantee you that there's they haven't even announced speakers mm -hmm. yet so like there's how's that for surprises <laughs> we're, we're kind of yeah. jumping the gun here dan do you know when we can expect speaker what? announcements how's that process going yeah that process is going well it's moving forward shortly we'll be um tweeting out speakers and the title of their talks um and getting them out leading up to zcon yeah i don't have a specific date but in the near future cool cool Thank you. And it was really good to hear that like you had the amount of applications that you had was like through the roof. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. a good sign. And uh, the people who applied or and didn't get accepted or if you missed the application period and you still want to be involved, oh, yeah. all the stuff that we already listed, like this is a way for you to be involved. Um, if you can make it to ZCon4 and your speech wasn't actually accepted, uh, we'll have cameras, we'll have microphones, we're willing to sit down with you in a quarter of the venue or wherever, uh, poolside, and, and do a quick interview or impromptu talk. Uh, I'm totally down yep. for all of that, and, and we'll have the equipment, but put it, put it to use, you know, it's kind of my attitude. Yep. And yeah, there's, you know, there's only two tracks, three days, we are going to have to turn down some talks, unfortunately, but the goal is to do community calls with the speakers who we have to unfortunately deny to keep them involved we want their talks to be heard amongst the community start a conversation so that's the plan with uh speakers we have to deny is to still have them on in some way shape or form yeah 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 cool i like I, i'm afraid that we will lose people if if uh, they get denied and and i hope that people don't take it that way at all like understand that this is uh, there's limited space and this is a growing and vibrant community. So uh, if, if this isn't the, the year where you can get on stage and speak, like, like I said, we'll have cameras, we'll have microphones, we can live stream. This is what we do. So find us yeah. and we'll figure it out. And um, <clears throat> the community call that Dan mentioned, look out for that. There's going to be uh, all, a lot of focus in ZFAV on ZCon4. So watch for all of this. I, I think that there will not be a shortage of ZCon4 information and planning and public community discussion happening between now and, and the end of July. So keep an eye out for all of that in the forums, probably the best place to watch, uh, and then on Twitter. Um, and Mastodon Twitter. is getting used a little here and there. Um, so that's kind yeah. of the main stuff. Um, I know you can't see the chat, but Jay just posted about a behind the scenes series, which is something Ryan and I have talked about a bit. So yeah, I think you can expect some sort of behind the scenes footage to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> That's really like my focus with Zcons in the past has always been with the remote audience because live streaming is, has been my focus. So uh, I'd like to keep that going with, with Zcon 2. That was really the only the only focus because it was this online remote conference and that opened up some new possibilities for how we can use the input, how we can access, give access to the online communities to Zcon. And so we've implemented some of the ideas that we learned from Zcon 2 into the following Zcons. 
and uh, and that's going to happen again this time. And now we have me and Dan both uh, unchained from our previous responsibilities and empowered with this yeah. new with these new platforms, with this equipment, uh, and with all of you to to play with us. So it's going to be so cool. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hectic. It's uh, I. I I can't say enough how much I'm looking forward to ZCon 4. And, uh, the, and oh, which brings me to one of my main points, actually. If you're going to be at ZCon 4, and especially if you are planning on participating with any of the ZFAV stuff, please let me know somehow, whether it's uh, posting on the forum that you're going to be there, posting in Discord that you're going to be there, DM me. Uh, chances are some of you have, I know some of you have already done this, and that's great. But I am not trying to dox anyone. I would just like to get an idea of how many people that want to participate in ZFAV Club will be hands-on there at, at the venue with us so that, uh, yeah. so that I can plan for like what scale these projects can be instead of taking shots in the dark and way overshooting. Plus, I, I'm planning on yeah. maybe some, some participation uh, freebies. And you know, I want to make sure I have enough of the candies. Cool. Okay. I guess that's everything then. I don't think I'm missing anything or forgetting anything. I probably am. Uh, keep an eye cool. out, especially for the last meetup video from, from last month, which will be out in the next few days. And then I'll have this video out uh, if you missed it and you're watching it now. Thank you. I don't know what time it is in the future. And if you are here watching on free to see or on Discord, uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks, John. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Rob, for your participation. This has been fantastic. Thanks, everybody. Looking yeah, forward man, to the next bet. time. Uh, next Tuesday, I'll see you all at the at the weekly meeting, right? Yeah? Cool. All right. <laughs> Signing off. Yep, yep. Bye, everyone. See you guys. All right, guys. Bye-bye.